Welcome back. We talk about the news and the law with all kinds of great people. And right now we have someone so well versed on both, a very special guest who's actually making her beat debut. Sonny Hostin is, of course, a former federal prosecutor, three time Emmy winning journalist, a renowned TV personality. You, of course, probably have seen her sitting alongside the dynamic women of The View over the years where she pulls no punches. Perhaps this something good will come out of this because I think this guy is a pig. If I can finish Wait, what I was going to say, okay. then maybe you would <laughs> hear me. When you're talking about a president that brags about grabbing women by the genitals. What okay. happened to our country's promise of giving give me your tired, your weak well, and your but, poor? When you're talking about a president that pays hush payments to Hi, women God. and lies to the American people on a daily basis. I, I am so relieved that... This is what justice finally looks like. And long before she became known to so many people watching from their living rooms and being on that Emmy winning talk show, Hostin was a longtime legal journalist reporting on some of the biggest trials and providing analysis for over a decade across many networks. I'm Sunny Hostin with the top stories on this Monday morning. She had no shame. I think she sort of had the mistress crazy eyes. Good morning and welcome back to In Session. I'm Sunny Hostin. Sunny Hostin is on the case. I prosecuted child sex crimes and sex crimes against women. But okay, I'm 30 years old. Excuse me, I'm excuse me sir. I, I'm sorry. Not that I should but... call you sir, but excuse me. <laughs> All that was missing was like the cuckoo birds going around her head. Austin is now embarking on a new challenge, launching a production company that focuses on social justice. And as if that wasn't enough, Dayenu, she's out with her first novel, Summer on the Bluffs. Uh, I'm thrilled to say Sonny Austin joins me now. How you doing? You went way back, Ari. <laughs> way way back. <laughs> way back great. in the red and black. Way back in the red, black, and uh, lumberjack, as Biggie would say. Good to have you. <laughs> it's so good to be here. I can't believe this is my first time uh, on your wonderful show that I watch every oh, night. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of uh, surprised at that, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> we're we're excited to have you. On, on the personal note, I will I will mention viewers can see from looking at your life, you make even productive people feel a little unproductive. Uh, you're doing a lot of great stuff with what I want to get into, but let's start with this big legal news. When you look at everything going on, including a story we've been covering, uh, the legal controversy surrounding uh, Congressman Matt Gates. Uh, we've mentioned he denies any misconduct. He hasn't been charged. Uh, and yet an ally of his that he's appeared with uh, has been indicted on sex crimes. There is an alleged confession letter. Uh, what do you see in a case like this? What's important legally for everyone to keep in mind? Well, listen, um, you know, I was a, f a federal prosecutor and um, as a federal prosecutor, you're, you're always pretty happy um, when you have a cooperator. Um, that is a pretty good thing uh, for, for a federal prosecutor, for any prosecutor, really. And uh, I think uh, the most important thing uh, that most defense attorneys will tell someone like a Matt Gates is stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. So I am a, a bit surprised uh, that we uh, keep keep on hearing uh, little things here and there fr from Matt Gates, but this is extremely serious. You know, I prosecuted child sex crimes, trafficking, um, and crimes against women for for a living. These are cases that uh, are taken extremely seriously, and uh, I'm I'm extremely concerned um that um you have someone that appears to be a, a cooperator um talking and uh, this is something that uh we don't know enough about i think um to really uh give an opinion on on uh, a sitting congressman but something that we should all be pretty concerned about this point. yeah you mentioned that and it's a theme with both mr giuliani who we mentioned earlier and mr gates uh, which which departs from whatever the standard advice would be. And yeah. really, to your point, it's at the intersection of law and news. Mm -hmm. Once the news stories run their course over however many days, these stories do tend to fade. But then when the subjects, uh, Giuliani and Gates both, start talking again, they're creating more news, which given the tenor of the stories, you'd think they wouldn't want. For your reaction, let me play a little bit of Matt Gates doing just that, speaking out again uh, in a discussion with former Trump officials uh, Gorka. Take a look. 
tell us your version of events and what you've lived through in the last month. Well, the things the media has said about me are lies, and the truth will prevail. There is a desire in big government, in big media, in big tech to target, deplatform, and destroy those who champion the America First cause. Sunny? Uh, again, it's not smart um, at this point to say anything. It's certainly um, not smart for Matt Gates, who's clearly uh, the target of an investigation, to continue uh, speaking to the media, to continue uh, speaking to others, perhaps in Congress. He's making witness after witness after witness. This is a very good place for a prosecutor to be in. He uh, doesn't know who is bugged and who isn't, who has a wire, who doesn't have a wire. Um, yeah. He's making himself uh, part of the story. I, I think what has been most surprising to me, Ari, is Rudy Giuliani. I mean, he is being um, investigated by his former office. We used to say when I was a federal prosecutor, I was in the District of Columbia, and we felt that we were the best office, of course, uh, amongst the U.S. Attorney's offices, but the Southern District of New York is often said to be sort of the crown jewel at the Department of Justice in terms of the U.S. Attorney's office. He headed that office. When you have your former office investigating you, you know some of the best of the best of the best are there. I cannot believe that after uh, a search warrant is executed at your apartment. But the next thing that you want to do is give an interview on, on Fox News. It really doesn't make any sense, especially because someone like Rudy Giuliani knows what it takes to get a search warrant to go into someone's home. You have to have probable cause that a crime was committed. And in order to get a search warrant for someone who was sort of, you know, the personal lawyer for the president of the United States, you not only have to go up the chain at the Southern District, and I've gotten some of these search warrants. They're very difficult to get. You've got to go to your, your immediate supervisor. Sometimes you have to go all the way to the U.S. attorney. And I would suspect that in this case, it may have even gone, it, it certainly went to the deputy attorney general, but it may have even gone to Merrick Garland before it went to a, a district judge, uh, a magistrate judge, before it went to a federal judge, um, they all thought perhaps that there was evidence of a crime. So for Rudy Giuliani and someone like Matt Gates to talk and talk and talk, um, if they are indicted, they have uh, made um, their cases much more difficult to defend. In yeah. my humble all, opinion. All great points and, and from experience. Uh, as mentioned in your introduction, tell us what moved you to write this novel. Uh, and if, if you care to, what, what else you're doing as well with this production company? Sure. Well, you know, the novel, by the way, was much easier to write than my memoir because memoirs are quite painful uh, to write. Your friends get angry with you. Your, your family gets angry with you. But um, this was, was um, such a joy, quite frankly, to write. Um, because it's the escape that I wanted um, to to read about. You know, we've gone through such difficult times, I think, over the past year and a half. I know my family suffered incredible loss. We lost both of my husband's parents to COVID. Mm, um, and so sorry. we've been reeling. Um, thank you. We've been reeling. And um, I, I just thought, um, you know, why not read about some sort of escape? And I, I was it was really difficult, Ari, for me to find um, a beach read uh, that was centered on people that look like me, right? Just women mm. of color, mm -hmm. women of a certain age, of a certain seasoning. And um, Toni Morrison said, if there's a book uh, that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. And I thought, I'm looking for this book that I want to read. I'm going to write it. And, and that was sort of the impetus of writing this book. And I I placed it in Martha's Vineyard, um, Oak Bluffs, because it's my love letter to, to Martha's Vineyard. I love vacationing there. But most importantly for me is because it was one of three places that my friend Larry Graham, um, he, he died this year, uh, wrote about in Our Kind of People. These were the only places in uh, this country at one time that Black people could buy waterfront property. And one of them was Oak Bluffs. One of them was Sag Harbor. 
um, in, in the Hamptons. And I thought, I'm going to place it there. And hopefully people will want to um, read about historical fiction and they'll want to go visit Martha's Vineyard and, and join the Obamas and uh, <laughs> join me and Valerie Jarrett and, and come and, and see what a magical place it is.